Hello everyone, my name is J.R. Lopez Gonzalez from the Politicalum Blog TV and I'm happy to share to you this 11th episode for our vlog series and um, for this particular episode we'll be talking about a very controversial issue this is the death penalty and the revival of it um, if we base it on the headlines showing that actually last week um, this was really actually approved by the Congress after the third and final reading, which means after passing it on the lower house, they'll be moving it back to um, the upper house in the Senate. But there are a lot of questions, of course, about this revival. And uh, as any one of you know, um, here in the Philippines, Mm, the Catholic Church is a bit strong on that kind of belief on, you know, quote-unquote, the sanctity of life and the importance of maintaining another person's life. So it is a very contentious issue and um, I'll be telling you what I think about this current development in, in Philippine politics. Let's start first with um, this bill. This bill, HB 4727, it was... Um, voted upon in, in, in the Congress, one abstained, 54 voted no, and 216 voted yes for the, for the revival of death penalty. But, you know, it goes with a, with a clause here that it's only limited for drug-related offenses. And, um, well, you know, death penalty is really not, you know, quote-unquote unconstitutional because it really is written on the Philippine Constitution back when this was... Um, created in 1987 but the thing is according to the Constitution it only limits death penalty to other heinous crimes and um, according to the Congress they consider this um, drug related these drug related crimes as being heinous crimes but it really got me asking because in um, the campaign of uh, Rodrigo Duterte he was mentioning about um, have reviving death penalty, but not just for drug-related crimes. He also mentions about rape or even plunder. So this kind of, uh, you know, makes me really wonder. And, um, well, it still is in the Congress, which means there still is a possibility of it being amended um, in, in, the, in the Senate. But I honestly would be looking forward to that because... Yes, drug-related crimes are, you know, it is really part of the president's drive for war on drugs, but we also have to consider that the, I would consider more heinous crimes are, of course, murder and, um, and, and rape. So, in this video, I'll be showing to you some common reasons why people prefer and are in favor of death penalty, and I'll be telling you, of course, my stance um, later on, and, um... In the last part, I'll be reading some messages because I did post some survey questions to everyone on, on Facebook and on Instagram. And a lot of people actually reacted. So thank you so much in advance for all those who really commented. And I apologize for those who were actually not included in, in, in the comments, in, in the featured comments. Because it's just so many. Alright, so let's get down now to... The part where um, I consider as problems first before we go to go and implement death penalty. You see, even in the United States, death row convicts actually, fr from that figure, from, from that group, um, it has been said according to some studies that um, about 4% were actually innocent, which are already in the death row. And um, thanks to some organizations in the U.S., that um, helped out those um, accused and those convicted. 4% of them were innocent and they were exonerated. So what does that tell us? It tells us that um, the judiciary uh, is not free from human fault. And this is where the problem is. Because it's more like easier for us to accept death penalty implemented and imposed on a certain crime if we are so sure that um, people who are really accused are not innocent people. And this is what also is what um, most church, most religious leaders would, would be saying. We don't have any assurance that this really is like uh, fail-proof. 
um we do have sometimes bad prosecution um another well um, factor that could affect that is maybe you know the, the the presence of some evidences or or maybe like bad counsel I, i'm not saying that you know that um, counsels really are problematic but sometimes it does affect the outcome of a certain criminal case so that is I believe the only thing that makes us not, you know, makes us really think hard in reimposing on um, death penalty here in the Philippines. For me, this is the main reason, um, next to other religious, quote unquote, moral um, reasons that people have against um, death penalty. But now, let me just tell you now um, the three main reasons why people get to be attracted to the reimposition of death penalty here in the Philippines. And the third um, reason, first, uh, you know, I'll be telling the third, second, and the first um, reasons. Third reason is that it's about financial. Um, reasons and what is weird is that in the United States, according to some survey, back in um, so you know some couple decades ago, Americans would prefer and um, they had the for for the main reason in supporting death penalty, they had you know the the concept of eye for an eye, tit for tat kind of reasoning, but um, the current trend would suggest that most people now in 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 the two twenty tens actually have the main reason financially and not um, on the concept of retributive justice. So that is, uh, you know, that is an, a significant improvement here because um, from quote-unquote moral, religious um, reason, America is moving now to the financial reason. And when we say financial reason, that basically means um, taxpayers are, you know, have enough of it. Like they're thinking, like, why would we um, share and, and and then pay our taxes for keeping uh, the lives of criminals longer? It, that's the kind of logic that they have. And um, in a way, I do understand what they mean because um, if you would really think about it, like if you are like a tax-paying victim of a heinous crime like would you actually stomach this kind of um concept we're in as a taxpayer your money goes to the um, let's just say the accommodation the food the services that are given towards um criminals who are serving life sentences so for them it would be it would be strange and it will be very, very illogical to have that. You know, it's like adding salt to your wounds. So I I totally agree with the quote-unquote financial reason. It's not practical for, for the victims' families in the first place. And for the taxpayers who are not even the closest, like, you know, the most um, near uh, to, to, to the to the victims or to the crime um still there may be they may be not um related but still they see this as being being uh not practical at all to be paying more just for them to have free accommodation free food inside um the the jail in, in, in all over the philippines so that's that's the third reason now count down now to the second reason second reason is more common of course it's the death penalty as being a deterrent against crimes. So, this is where some um, arguments against um, the death penalty comes into play because they say that there is no scientific proof that death penalty really deters um, crimes. Uh, you know, all over the world, there's no solid proof that it does. But um, my view here is quite simple. For me, first of all, um, Death penalty deters crimes, f that's my belief. Why? Because it's basic human instinct for us um, to be fearful of, of something, of our possession, of about our well-being. And um, this changes our behavior. You know, common um, logic would dictate that even like a small kid um, or, 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 or any society for that matter, looking at it on a wider range, 
Um, the society maintains peace and order because we do have penalties and punishments that are equal to the kind the kind of you know crime committed. So, am I saying now that you know an eye for an an eye should be an exchange for an eye? Like you know the code of Hammurabi says on 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 its ancient laws. I do not quite agree because I honestly think that um, crimes like say for example rape or, or killing another people uh, other people you cannot replace the life that has already been taken and um, obviously you cannot like have an exact thing um, be repaid to you because life cannot be um, brought back anymore but my point and the point of retributive um, kind of kind of um, thinking is that because of this concept people would really think twice before doing that and um, there is a price to pay for every kind of action that they do um, obviously we do have choices and um, we can choose whatever we want to do but we cannot choose the consequences that go with it so yeah I honestly think that um, death penalty is a deterrent, just like with any other punishments, just like with any other penalties. The question here boils down to whether or not death penalty is an appropriate kind of punishment. Um, like, on, on its essence, does it really um, constitute um, the concept of retributive justice? Which goes now to the first and final argument that I think would really um, make you know the families of the victims even the normal uh, quote-unquote normal regular citizens of this country it's really on retributive justice for me it's not even about deterrence though you know we already have the police for that but um in the first and the main argument i think that makes it all the more you know quote-unquote for lack of a better word enticing is that we as human beings we want payback it is on, you know, it's all part of our human nature. I believe that everyone, you know, regardless of race, uh, whatever kind of society you're in, we really do have this um, innate fe feeling for retribution. And um, I think the, the judiciary process should also put that into uh, consideration. That's why still, you know, in this kind of society that we have now, we're in the 2010s and, um, quote-unquote, we are the modern society now, still, some countries have death penalty because for the because of these exact same reason that we need to have payback. They don't have to, you, you, you don't, you don't um, consider them as being fit to survive in a society because of what they have done and what other possible things they could have done with their with their lives if they continue continue living so this is the concept of retributive justice that for me is the main main reason um, it brings certain measure of closure it you know it assuages uh, assuages uh, the grief that the living um, um, experiences so for me these are the main arguments that you know would really make one think that yeah death penalty could really be a part of a solution if it could not be totally like serve as a deterrent for me it's retribution if the families of um the victims um if if they feel it if they they feel this really deep um um grief I believe that that's the only way to, to satisfy them, of course, is to bring back the perpetrator, perpetrators into justice, you know, let them feel the, the sword of justice and the harshness of the law. And um, that is the main reason. Now, what is my stance? My stance is simple. I'm actually for death penalty. I believe that um, all these the three mentioned three three mentioned um, reasons that I said to you for me it, it makes sense I would accept the limitations of my spe my species and I would say that um, things happen and um, these things have to happen because it is one of the main ways of maintaining peace and order it's one of the m ways of maintaining dignity you know they say ah oh, it makes us um, less human. Of course, um, maybe that's with the what that's with the with the thinking that 
um, payback is not part of human nature, but it is. And in fact, maybe, just maybe, having a little paradigm shift here, maybe we are actually upholding our humanity by um, acknowledging to ourselves that we need retribution and um, it, can be, it can be served through our um, judiciary system and that's how I see it. Alright, now, I'm done saying my stance on death penalty. Now let me share to you some of the comments and reactions that our readers and um, our viewers have um, written on our comment section for Facebook and um, Instagram. Let us start with, um, for, for some Instagram comments here, we do have, you know, one, two, we have four people, five people who actually, um, responded, yeah, except from, you know, 1k present, but, um, we have first here, Das Politisch says yes, Al Volsen, um, said awesome, um, Apolita said yes sir, Amy Mangadang also said yes, and Renee Damour also, uh, well, she just gave a smiley here, so I don't exactly know what does that what that means as a as a reply, but those are the responses for um, our Instagram account. Now let's go to Facebook, and um, these are the comments that our readers have um, answered on our question: Are you in favor of death penalty, and why? Okay, and now let's go to Facebook, and um, 319 actually responded um, with the reactions on Facebook, but I'll be reading some of those who were featured here. Um, let's have first, Connie Faigal Tapar. It is our desire to bring back the death penalty. We ourselves was, were tormented, seeing those rapists and murderers who took my niece beautiful life here on earth. No second chance. God has given a willpower to use this properly. A gift from our Lord to choose. A birthright. So let us use this by making a law to punish humans who validate the right to live. Death here on earth and God's judgment in heaven. Okay. Let's have another one here. Melian Lagos. Yes, no, yes. Because for me, it is a kind of discipline among ourselves not to do these crimes. Walang may gusto ng kamatayan kahit sino man sa ating lahat, lalo nabibitayan ka. Bakit matatakot ka sa bitay? Huwag kang gumawa ng isang krimen. Sure, walang magaganap na bitay. Yan lang naman ang purpose ng bitay na maging 0% crime ang bansang Pilipinas. Talamak na ang krimen ang dumiduminan ng bansa natin. Kaya panahon na para linisin ito dahil sawang-sawa na tayo sa mga dating sistema natin na walang pinagbago. Okay, for the rough um, translation on the Filipino part, um, Melian says here, No one wants death, and especially, you know, in a way, um, uh, by the way of death penalty. Why should we be afraid of the death penalty? Do not do the crime, and no death penalty. That's the only purpose of the death penalty to make 0% crime for the Philippines. And crime is everywhere. Our country is dirty. So it's the time now to clean our country because we are so fed up with the old system that we have, which has no change. Okay. Adolf Sebeka says here, yes, no, now, which means, you know, yes, now. Um, why, why afraid of death penalty? Are we afraid of the sword of justice? Hindi totoong mahihirap lang ang mahatulan, mahatulan ng death penalty. Dahil ang isang nahatulan ng death ay automatic na review ang kanyang hatol sa Supreme Court. Natatandaan ko noon na may isang nahatulan ng pero pinaabsuelto ng Supreme Court. Adolf says here, um, rough translation, he said, It's not true that only the poor are actually imposed with death penalty because if one is um, given death penalty it is automatic automatically reviewed by the Supreme Court and I remember that there was a time that one person was in the death row but it was it was changed it was uh, not allowed by the Supreme Court 
Okay. Um, let's have Josie Altamimi here. Yes, for death penalty, and they should include rape, plunder, and treason. Okay. Onyok Zev here. Yes, I'm in favor. Para naman mabawasan ang masamang tao na gumawa, gumagawa ng karumaldumal na krimen at saka dapat pagbuhay ang inutang, buhay din ang kabayaran. Um, according to Onyok in, you know, in, in, in English, he says that he is in favor so that um, the number of bad people will be reduced who actually do heinous crimes and because they um, took the life and so they have to pay it with their own lives and maybe let's have two more wooden heart says here yes if you're a law-abiding citizen why would you be afraid of death penalty wala ka bang ikatakot kung wala ka naman balak lumabag sa batas you would actually fear none if you don't have any plans of violating the law and let's have final one here let's this is a little bit long let's have jose sikioko he says i go for death penalty there are heinous crimes that even the longest time in jail is not equal to the offense committed some criminals can no longer be rehabilitated that jail is no longer a deterrent Upon release from jail, no employer would trust an ex-convict and their only choice is to be a burglar or a drug peddlers. Okay? Recidivists and heinous crime offenders along with public official plunderers who deprived thousands and thousands of poor people eating three times a day should be penalized with death penalty, which is more or less expensive than to keep them in jail. Death penalty gives end to the sufferings of the offended parties. Alright. Um, so far, for some weird reason, I do not see um, those comments against um, death penalty. Maybe because right now, more people in the Philippines tend to be in favor of death penalty. So, what do you guys think? Um, do you think death penalty is okay for the Philippines? Do you think it's about time to really revive it? Because the last one that we have, I believe was back during the time of um, President Estrada in the early 2000s. So, what can you say about death penalty? If you have um, your good arguments against um, death penalty or if you're in favor, please type down your comments um, on the description and on the comment section below. If you have questions on some links or, uh, you know, for, for our blog, all these links are in the description our SoundCloud accounts, our Instagram accounts, Twitter and Facebook are also there. And um, just before I close this video, thank you so much to all of the viewers. We are now um, close to 1,300 um, subscribers here in YouTube, in YouTube. And um, we also have daily improvements with our followers on Facebook and Instagram. So. Once more, thank you so much. This is J.R. Lopez Gonzalez, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Hello, you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video on death penalty, but I do have to apologize, though, for the late upload of the video. Actually, um, I'm on a cruise here um, in the middle of Hong Kong and the Philippines, but hopefully I'll see you guys in our next video. Goodbye.